This is the book of Proverbs 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Baal Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka, Quidash, double honors to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. Proverbs 16 and verse 18 again. Pride goeth before destruction. So now we know what to pray for. Pray for increase of humility. To always stay humble in the spirit. Because once pride enters into your vessel, that comes your destruction. It says, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah, we don't want to have a arrogant spirit. Okay? That's why the scripture tells us in the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 3, in verse 17, it says, My son, go on with thy business in meekness. And that's all around the board. We all know that we have to go to work, handle certain things, but our main business is this truth. So the scripture says, My son, go on with thy business in meekness. OK, it says, so shall thou be beloved of him that is approved. So we know that the Most High is approved, but Yahweh Shai also have been approved because he came to the earth as a servant, which is showing ultimate humility coming from a godlike state. But he also finished his mission as a servant. OK, so he has been what approved. And we want to be beloved by Yahweh Shai. Okay, meaning to receive salvation, to have a protective hedge about us. And all of that begins with us staying humble in everything that we do. It says, verse 18, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And how do you become great? By increase of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of this 100% truth. All right? From the Most High through Yahweh Shai. So, the more you learn, the more humble you should be. It says, and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Okay? So that's our main goal, to find favor before our Lord, Yahweh Shai, because that leads to a crown of life. But once pride enter into your vessel, that begins your destruction. It says, many are in high place and of renown. Many are in high place in this society, and they are what? Renowned men, meaning they are highly respected for the accolades that they have accomplished here in America, mainly. All right? But it says, but mysteries, this 100% knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the kingdom are revealed unto the meek. See that? So that's the benefit of being humble, being meek at the spirit. It says, for the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. And only the lowly, which is us, is going to honor our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. But a proud individual will shun their salvation, which is shunning Yahweh Shai. Okay, and once you do that, the scripture tells us again, Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goeth before destruction. Once you do that, that begins your destruction. And an haughty spirit before a fall. And once you destroy something, it falls. Okay? And we don't want to fall from the grace of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. We don't want to fall from up under that protective hedge. And it begins with that proud demon entering into your vessel. Okay? Now, you have a such thing as positive pride. All right? Which is having pride in the things that you do. The scripture says if you find something to do, with your hands, roughly paraphrase, and do it with all your might. That's having pride or positive pride in something that you're doing, but don't have that negative pride, thinking that you're better than someone, all right? Being arrogant, being high-minded, being haughty, because that's the beginning of your destruction, and it leads to your fall, and it leads to the most high resisting you, 
as the book of James, chapter 4, and verse 6 tells us, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, The Most High resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Let's look up this word, resisteth, because we don't want the Most High to resist us. Therefore, Yahweh Shai will not deliver us. The word resisteth, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G, 498, Antitasso. Antitasso. It says to range in battle against. So we want the Most High to be all for us, not against us. But due to negative pride entering into your vessel, the Most High is going to range and battle against you, meaning you're going to be destroyed, okay, whether it be now or in the future, but it's going to lead to your fall. So the scripture tells us in James 4 and 6, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, the most I resisteth, meaning he range and battle against you, the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's why the most I is against the wicked. All right, because the book of Obadiah tells us about the wicked, and we don't want to be a part of that number. Obadiah, verse 3, it says, The pride of thine heart, meaning your mind, have deceived thee. And once pride coming to your vessel, just like Esau, it deceives you. All right, it makes you think things that are not really reality. Okay, it makes you think that you're better than someone that taught you. See that? It says that thou dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks whose habitation is high that saith in his heart who shall bring me down to the ground? See that? So that's what pride will do to an individual. You become high-minded. Alright? And you separate yourself from the most high. See? The scripture tells us in the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter chapter 10 and verse 7 it says pride is hateful before the most high and man and by both do of one commit iniquity see that so pride is hateful before the most high and man all right, the most I hate pride and a humble man or a meek individual hate pride also. Let's jump down to verse 12, and this is the point. It says, the beginning of pride is when one departeth from the most high. See that? And his heart is turned away from his maker. Let's read that again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High. So you start separating yourself from the Most High once that pride demon cometh into your vessel. It says in his heart, which is his mind, the word heart goes back to the Hebrew word lob, which means your mind, and his heart is turned away from his maker. See that? So now you have turned away from Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, because the Most High gave Yahweh Shah the blueprint, and Yahweh Shah created all things that are created. So a prideful individual will shun their salvation, which is shunning Yahweh Shah. And that's why we want to pray that that wicked, filthy demon, negative pride never enters into our vessel. All right, because it leads to your downfall, it leads to your destruction. The book of James. Chapter 4 and verse 10. It says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and he shall lift you up. See that? So we want to be lifted up on all levels. We want to be lifted up from the dunghill, all right, from out of that confused state to standing on our feet by receiving this 100% gospel of the kingdom. And we also want to be lifted up at the end, all right? Meaning we want to be beamed up upon those chariots, okay? Now, I got an example of humility, all right? One example of humility, the book of Acts, 
chapter 8. And verse 29, it says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. All right, so Philip received the spirit and the spirit told Philip to go to this chariot where the Ethiopian um, Enoch was residing, all right, which was really an Israelite. Verse 30, it says, and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and say of understandeth thou what thou readeth? And the Ethiopian Enoch said, and he, and he said, how can I accept some man should guide me. And that's an example of humility, being able to be guided by another man, you being a man yourself. It says, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So he asked Philip to come up and to break this scripture down. Verse 32, the place of the scripture, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shears, so open not his mouth. And that goes back to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, showing that ultimate example of humility. All right, because Yahweh Shai is the ultimate example of humility. Will Crick Precept is the book of Philippians chapter 2. And I'm going to start at, I'm going to start at verse, verse four, it says, look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. That's showing humility. All right. Putting someone else before yourself. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach, Yehovah Shai, who being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, showing humility, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation. See that? And took upon him the form of a servant, which is showing humility, and was made in the likeness of men. Now that's another example of humility. All right? Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See that? Verse 9. Wherefore the, the Most High also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, which is Yahawashai. All right? Meaning his name is ranked above all other names. And that's what humility leads to. You being raised up. You being lift up or lifted up. Okay, and that's our end goal to be lifted up on high on all levels. And that starts by being humble and meek in the spirit. So, you know, Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.